Welcome to this week's uh, edition of the Ministry Shift. Um, my name is Matthew Parker. I'm the Archdeacon of Stoke-upon-Trent and our subject this week is a vast one. We're going to think about uh, discipleship. It is of course uh, one of our tasks and priorities and it is a priority of course for any Christian person. So we're going to be thinking about discipleship and perhaps just reminding ourselves of the origin of the word in the New Testament, a disciple as a learner. And so we're going to be asking our wonderful panelists what they have learnt about Christian discipleship, particularly, of course, over the past uh, three months as we have endured lockdown and COVID-19. So I'm going to uh, ask them to introduce themselves and I'm going to begin with um, Rose. Tell us about yourself, Rose. Hello, I'm Rose Westwood and um, I'm from St Anne's in Chasetown, which is part of the Burntwood Chase team. Uh, and I'm a lay minister and a lay minister for community ministry and particularly partnership. Thank you. And a familiar face to Ministry Shift viewers, Jim, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Jim Trude. I'm the rector at St Matthew's Church in Morsel, uh, a town centre church with a civic ministry as well. And Evelyn. Another new face. My name is Evelyn and I worship at St Chad's in Bonningale, which is part of the United Benefits. And my ministry there is leading quiet day ministry with my husband. Thank you very much. And to John, finally. Hi, I'm John Wellsby. I'm a reader at St Jude's in Wolverhampton. And I'm also a voluntary workplace chaplain for Black Country Urban Industrial Mission. Welcome to all of you and thank you for taking part this afternoon. Um, Jim, if I could turn to you first and just ask you the question, what, what has discipleship looked like for you? Um, what's been distinctively different? What perhaps has been challenging or what has been strengthened? Um, for me, I, I, I think it's been a, a reaffirmation that my initial calling is to follow Jesus rather than to be a minister. Um, although obviously being a minister is part of my calling now. And uh, a lot of that has been uh, strengthened through reading of the daily office, which I found really helpful uh, during lockdown. Um, I've been reading theological books, uh, specifically focusing uh, on challenging kind of like topics that I perhaps would have pushed to the side a bit more uh, had we been outside of lock lockdown. And also sharing and networking with others. I've got a lot of networks that people I meet with and pray with. That's been really helpful. But the thing that's probably been most helpful for me has been appreciating God again, particularly in nature. And we live in the middle of a town, uh, although it is a very nice road we live in, but just appreciating being able to hear birdsong and see the beauty of God's creation. And that's really spoken to me when I've gone out walking uh, and spending time with God on my walks. Brilliant. Study and prayer and encountering God through the natural world. Uh, does that have any ring any bells for you Evelyn in terms of your own discipleship? Yes it does and I think um, as Jesus did we've been out of the building and out into the wider world not always in the community because of isolation but we've had to find ways of reaching people and it's been amazing to see the sort of things we've had through Zoom, through worship coming through the post and specifically for me for my quiet day ministry how do I get that over to people? So for the past eight weeks, we've been offering a quiet day ministry through the emails, through post. And at the moment, we're going through um, footprints, going through a couple of lines at a time. And we've offered this through prayer, Bible text, and a few questions. And it's been fabulous to do that. Good, thank you. That sounds really interesting. We may come back to that. Rose, what about your discipleship? How's that? How's it going? Is it harder now than it was or uh, just different? It's, um, it's, I, I, I feel it's very, for me, it's very exciting. It's, um, before lockdown, I was already looking at partnerships within the community. So I was looking at partnering some ands with um, community organisations around in our parish. And I've just been licensed as a community minister for where I am for exactly for that, for enabling community partnerships. And so the partnerships were already there. I was just looking at ways to um, get my foot in the door, really, um, and to connect the church with those partnerships. So when lockdown happened, those partnerships were already very 
one particular one particular one was already ready to start partnering could see that there was going to be problems ahead in terms of people accessing food and help and so suddenly this partnership grew very quickly um, through some nimble work of the sort of church leaders and the organization leaders so i found myself um, in the middle of that and um, out in the community um, out far more than I had been really with things like food bank and food parcels and so I'm just out there and it's very different from what I was doing before it's what I wanted to do but I didn't know it would be like this yeah. so in a way the, the, the crisis has kind of um, clarified or crystallized your ministry oh. in a way that would not have been expected yeah, I just feel God was saying, uh, I'd heard from some friends that the, the food bank had was about to close because um, the people who normally help with it were having to isolate. And I knew that um, Burnt Would Be a Friend, which is the organization that was set up, had got, got about 80 volunteers signing up to say, what can we do in our community at this time? So I knew we've got all the volunteers and we got the needs. It was just matching them. And I felt God was saying, come on, the, the over 70s have done these food banks for years and years and years. It's your turn to step up. So we've got these under 70s now stepping up at the food bank and the food parcels and it's great. I, I love it. A new generation. John, yeah. your discipleship, you, you exercise um, a, a ministry as a reader and as a, a chaplain. How's it, how's it been for you living for Jesus in those ways? Uh, well, I, I mean, I, I feel a great limitation on some areas. Um, particularly the chaplaincy, because I'm not able to go to the, the workplace where I go. Mm. Um, I took, in terms of my own experience, I, I noticed what Jim had said about uh, a key thing about being a disciple is being in relationship with Jesus, being in relationship with the Lord. And for me, this has been a period of um, finding new aspects to that relationship, really. I, I equate it in my, in my experience. I, I retired from my job a few years ago. And a lot of my relationship with God, I realized when I retired, had been built about seeking his strength to cope with a job that I found very demanding. Um, and so when I retired, I had to explore a new sort of relationship with the Lord. Uh, and this has been another step like that, really, because I did find different things, different activities to be involved in. But again, my activity has been reduced, but I still have to think he's still my Lord, he's still my father. And what does that mean in terms of my new experience? And I, I've done some bits of reading and, and trying to keep up with Bible study and such like, but, but it has been trying to find a new dimension in my relationship with God really, as I'm more often at home than I am, than I am normally. Yeah, so I, some of us will have been thinking about the lectionary passage which is set for this coming Sunday, of Trinity Sunday, where Jesus tells his disciples, go and make disciples of all nations and what does going look like when we're in lockdown you know? but actually rose you've been been all over the place and doing all sorts of exciting things but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be out there in the community there are all sorts of ways in which people have found and been able to reach out to other people and if we if we kind of move on to that area we talked about our own discipleship but many of us are in a position where we're offering we're supporting other people in their discipleship and encouraging that. and even you you said you began to say a little bit about your uh, work as a leader of retreats. Do you want to say a little bit more about how that's been done? You've talked about emails. How, how are you supporting people as they try and grow in their own spiritual lives? Well, um, when we do quiet days, it's not actually a retreat. It's a whole day. And we go along with the theme for the day and we offer um, quiet reflections, quiet places, because where we are with our church, we've got wonderful walkways there. And it's having that quiet time with the Lord, finding space to get rid of the business in your life, uh, which is so important. And because we're not able to offer this anymore at the moment, we felt that we needed still to do something for people. So we got in touch with people that have been to our quiet days and other people that we felt might benefit from this. And we've had feedback of yes that's really helped we haven't concentrated so much on covid19 we've brought um other areas in such as footprints which is allowing you to think of other aspects of your life other worries that have happened during your life and giving them an area to think about and i, I must agree with jim um being able to do this in lockdown for myself as well is brought me that quiet time with the lord 
I've been able to talk to him and go through these footprints with him. And you seem to find yourself in these answers and you've got to the time to build a wonderful relationship with the Lord. And you can pass this on to the people that you're sending these reflections to. And it's, it's good to have this special time. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a tremendous gift, isn't it? I mean, it's, a, it's also a burden because we'd rather not be in lockdown, if we're perfectly honest. But it is, a, it is, it is an opportunity that God can use. Rose, you're working in the community with people who may or may not have a faith of one kind or another. How, how, are you, how do you see discipling others in that kind of context? It's, it's so similar to what I have been doing um, in the, for the past 10 years with part of something called Link for Life, where we gather a team of people and take them over to Hands at Work in Africa. And I've always loved leading a team and nurturing a, a small community. And um, I find that this is so similar because um, like with Link for Life, I am meeting people from, this, this has enabled me to meet people in the community that I wouldn't have met otherwise. People from different churches and no churches, and um, I, I love being in that environment. Um, and it's an environment for me that just feels, it just feels like church. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a book that I've always loved called, um, um, I've got it here, Following Jesus, the plural of discipleship is church. And to me, if, you, if you're in a group of people who are all working towards the same thing, so if you're all working towards feeding people or encountering people and befriending people you're all working on the same thing you're, you're in the journey together and so in this journey over time I can just see these relationships between the volunteers growing and I love it I, I, I love to see things start to happen um, see, see people's potential so it's about building a team really I think yeah. with, a team with a shared journey and, and discipleship as, as kind of a thing that it's a journey that comes in stages. People are at different points on that journey, and you've got the privilege yeah. of, of sharing something of, of God's yeah. love with them. Discipleship, in that is a, discipleship as apprentice, apprenticeship. Yeah, it's a great image. Yeah, yeah, very important image. Uh, John, you, you you said earlier that it's it's tricky for you, particularly your chaplaincy work, because you can't go down to the bus station. Not yet, anyway. Things may change. But um, so, h- how does how does discipling others feel to you? Is that does that mean a bigger shift towards the reader ministry? Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've been in little bits of contact with bus drivers, uh, but I think that the, the, the main things are, are still involved in speaking to the church, though now via video rather than live. Uh, the thing that's been, I think, most exciting for me, though, is that as a reader at the church, I'm responsible for supporting a group of people who are exploring their calling to, to preaching themselves. Um, and who want to at least take an occasional role uh, in the church, in leading services and in preaching. And uh, I was very nervous about what we could do in in lockdown, but I I, I found Zoom meetings with the small preachers group really helpful. And I think they've uh, found it helpful as well. As we've been able to, they've had to be more focused. It's different from sitting in a room and chatting, but that focus and what we've focused on in the first couple of meetings has been how we approach the word of God. So we've looked at passages and people have been set questions to come back to. And that that focus, I think, has been really helpful and people have really engaged with it, such that after our last meeting last week, they all said we need to meet again to reflect on what each each was said. So we've got another meeting planned later this week. And actually the focus brought to that question of how you approach the word of God how you're sure what it's saying and what it might be saying to the church today uh, has been has been really useful and that's that's surprised me because i'm i'm much happier sitting in a room with people thank god for zoom <laughs> up to a point <laughs> uh, jim finally um you're pastoring a congregation amongst other things how are you helping them in their discipleship at the moment I think, I think in many respects, it's a mixture of what uh, everybody else has been saying. It's kind of words and actions. There are plenty of opportunities to get involved in the community, even in this lockdown, and, and serve the community. Uh, that can be from simple things, from just making phone calls. Uh, so actually encouraging others, that's an aspect of discipleship. Uh, but also discussing uh, things. Then there's a kind of actually going out and delivering. So there's a very practical side to it. Then there's also the word side, which involves sermons and uh, we have a big emphasis on home groups and learning. So 
uh, if things come through to me from various organisations, and I think they'll be helpful for people, either to look at in a group, at the moment we're looking at prayer, um, but also other things, I can, I can funnel them out uh, through our bulletins, which go out pretty much daily, uh, or our weekly bulletin for those who aren't online. Uh, and that includes courses that they can go on. We've got quite a few people who are attending another church's marriage course at the moment and discipleship in their marriage. Uh, but it can be many other, other ways as well. It's um, about giving people opportunities to engage in discipleship, I think. Uh, and again, I've been really encouraged by how many people are feeding into our church services in different ways who haven't done before. It's been great. Thank you. We are learning an enormous amount and we simply don't have time for all my questions. But um, I'm very grateful uh, to our panellists, to Jim and Rose, to John and Evelyn. And I'm grateful to you for watching. So until the next Ministry Shift, goodbye.